Okay, so on the topic of um, building antenna to help higher impulses to seed the earth. And there are two basic problems. The first main problem is um, our astral sphere. Um, our astral sphere consists of the thoughts and feelings of everything on this planet. And um, humans are very, a very dominant species. So plants don't just feel as normal plants or animals like normal animals because we interfere in the world. We interfere in the landscape, we interfere in the quality of the water, the quality of the air, uh, in the sound, in the radiation. And all these things change how plants feel, how animals feel. And that creates a very different um, astral blanket over our planet. And um, basically the vibration of this blanket uh, pulls in certain impulses which are similar and reflects impulses which are very different. So by creating a lot of uh, uncomfortability, fear, suffering, uh, unhealthiness on in this astral sphere, those powers are invited to come to our planet and seed this planet. And likewise, yeah, lighter powers who want to create a happy, happy, joy, joy planet, yeah, don't feel at home here. They feel repelled from this place of misery and suffering. And these impulses cannot reach the earth very easily because of the astral blanket which we have created. Um, the other thing is basically the role of our own sun. Our own sun, as you may know, consists of, uh, comprises 99% of all mass in our solar system. So the earth in itself is very, very minute compared to the power of the sun. Uh, the sun itself um, or the solar spirits themselves, they're responsible for evolution within our solar system. They have to serve whatever spirits come to live here and make sure that these spirits have what they need to evolve. And depending on the spirits which are here, the solar spirits will bring different impulses or formulate different plans which allow different egregores to operate in our solar system and on our planet. So the quality of spirit is, or spirits within our solar system, also determines very much the, which egregores are able to operate. And right now it's a bit of a free-for-all. The solar spirits are basically saying like, okay, we pull our hands off. Right now we have no programming. Uh, we'll just see who wants to yeah, write this solar system for the next 26,000 years. And then from the seeds we have and the impulses we get, we will start to build a new programming so that the spirits which are here can start evolving. Uh, but they don't actively choose who is here or not. Spirits are free to move in and move out during such an event. Um, so, if we're going to build an antenna, we need to, in a way, bypass these two potential problems. So we need to bypass, to a certain degree, the solar spirits, because they can block us. But usually, if they block impulses, it is for the good of the spirits on the planet. So that's not that much of an issue. But yeah, ideally, an antenna works all the time, and not just when the solar spirits want it. Um, if you want it as a real resource for the people who incarnate here or who might get marooned or stuck here, not having disincarnated or left the solar system when they had the chance. And still to get a kind of a lifeline to be able to phone home and to get some support or some energy so they too can develop themselves at least to such a degree they can eventually leave this place again. So it could be also kind of an escape hatch for them, which we are building. Um, so solar spirits are vastly superior to us. Um, so ultimately we need to work in such a way 
that the solar spirits are bypassed, but they in a way allow us or permit us to bypass them. And this usually means that whatever we do has an on and an off switch, or otherwise it has certain conditions. Um, so it only works when a certain person does a certain something, or when a person has certain aspects in their energy body, so other people are not affected. It has to be selective somehow for the solar spirits to give permission to do such a thing or for such a thing to stay oper operational. Um, the second thing is working with the astral sphere. The astral sphere of the Earth is very limiting and it's also constantly in flux. So it is very much like a static which is constantly interfering with all antenna. So our antenna has to be able to pierce this astral blanket. And now we come to the interesting part, to the geomancy. Um, it is possible to change the energy of the Earth so that the astral sphere in that place either doesn't exist or is weaker. Um, one of the easiest ways to do that is to make sure there is nothing generating astral energies. So if you have a desert or a barren mountain, um, there is no life there, there is no thoughts there, there are no emotions there, so these are natural weak spots or holes in the astral sphere. So such locations are ideal for creating antenna. And this is also why so often monasteries or hermits are in, found in these places, because of their isolation energy is a lot more pure there and less yeah, confused, meddled, less static. Um, but ultimately in such a place there's also very few people who can benefit from such an impulse because mountains and deserts are usually not very highly populated and if they were they would lose their function because they're no longer able to receive any impulses. So ultimately we want to create a kind of an artificial mountain or artificial desert in a place where people can visit it or other spirits and animals and plants can benefit from their, from their impulse. So what we need to do is to um, create, if you will, a, uh, a tunnel um, which holds the other energies at bay and creates um, a kind of a, a crystal which vibrates or uh, corresponds to the source energy. Um, the easiest way to do this is to use sympathetic magic. So sympathetic magic basically means that um, if uh, it's like a voodoo doll so the person is in one location, you have the doll, which is energetically actually the same. And because they are the same, and outside of the physical dimension, things which have one energy are one, are connected, that any change to the doll's energy will change the person, and any change to the person's energy will affect the energy of the doll. So in the same way, we should in a way create a part of that alien culture or higher egregore or um, yeah, advanced master and place it here on the earth. So that's step one. We need to in a way crystallize this impulse which is now available on the earth into objects which can hold that impulse. And generally um, Stone is very useful for that. Metal can also be used. Um, so you need to transform the energy of a stony place, which have lots of rocks and other formations, and preferably also some metal in the ground, because that helps. Um, and to transform this energy in such a way that it actually becomes as much as possible the same energy as exists in this other star system which is ruled by another egregore. Um, if you want examples of how to do this, you can visit Stonehenge, or you can visit the Great Pyramid in, uh, uh, in Egypt, 
uh, or you can visit the Maya temples because they also used similar techniques to create portals between our worlds and yeah, other solar systems. So it is indeed um, a kind of a gate because if you are able to um, join your energy body to the energy of that place then you can also manifest in that place. Your spirit can in a way become one with the Maya temple here and then your spirit can wander on the planet which is in a way on the other side of the Maya temple. Uh, and this is also how spirits from that side are able to cross over into our world and to incarnate in human bodies, for instance, or just to show us things, to teach us things. Um, the problem is that such a gate needs to be created on our side. Um, and this is because of the, um, the laws of, uh, of dominance. Uh, we as creatures who exist here are considered to be the rulers or the masters of this place and we are free willed so we can decide if we allow or disallow another spirit to come in the spirit which is not natural here which doesn't belong here has no rights so you can see those kind of spirits even though they may be very advanced very intelligent super beings as being illegal aliens who are just stuck in some refugee center and not allowed to vote because they are not allowed to influence conditions here on the earth until they are given a body. And we who already have bodies can in a way help with allowing these refugees reintegrate into or to integrate into our society. Um, they're not so much refugees, they're more volunteers or messiahs, but still they need some help to, uh, yeah, they need a portal and ultimately they will need people who will support them or they can work with. Um, so yeah, we need an antenna and something which can work as a, tr as a transmitter, but we also still need a way to remove the uh, yeah, the power of the, of the astral sh um, blanket. So one of the ways which we can, uh, techniques we can use is to use ley lines. These are places where the earth is very powerful, the earth energy, and the earth is also extra sensitive. So if you would place such a part of an alien world on a ley line, then even though a lot of the energy gets blocked out, the energy which gets through, is amplified a lot by the energy of the earth and also it's carried into the surrounding area so that makes it a little bit easier so instead of having to find this one stone which was yeah blessed by uh, this alien power you now have an area which is a few kilometers across and the people living in that area will also share in this inspiration they don't have to sit on the stone itself so those are ideal locations to, uh, to build such antenna. Um, the other thing is indeed like removing the, the astral sheath. Um, for this you generally need some cooperation of air spirits and earth spirits. Um, earth spirits are very much things which uh, hold a certain structure so they have to be convinced that the structure here needs to be different uh, that there needs to be a hole and that this place needs to be accessible and that usually requires some bigger restructuring you can't just punch a hole in the astral and think everything will be normal because energies flow in the astral things move in move out incarnate disincarnate um, so the whole area will have to be restructured a bit so that the area doesn't get disbalanced, gets upset by doing it because a lot of portals which people build fail because they are thinking to small scale. You can build a portal in your backyard but since it will affect the whole city and if the energy flow in the city gets disrupted 
ultimately the stronger influence of the city will crush the energy of the portal. So it has to be done in a very harmonious fashion where the energy of the portal integrates in the surrounding area, which is usually a few kilometers across. Um, the second part is also working with the air spirits. The air spirits are the ones who in a way uh, carry energies through the astral and also in and out of the astral. Um, so they are creating a kind of a collective field of the earth so that everything which lives here is connected to to each other and for them to suddenly not do that or do something else is very confusing um, so they need to be taught that these weird alien energies they're okay and they're just like the earthly energies and you can carry them around as well and you shouldn't run away you should just allow this to happen and also not allow the other Earth's energies to mingle or interfere with it too much because then you lose the purity of the impulse. Um, so also the local yeah, elementals in a way have to be conditioned to, um, to support the structure which you're putting in place. Um, well, then of course there's the water elementals. Well, it is nice to have a strong water energy, strong life force so that the impulse is not just a theoretical one or a dreamy one but it actually has the power to manifest itself and it is nice if there's also a healthy fire energy so real transformation can take place so that the new impulses don't get lost because there's more old impulses but that the new impulses are able to transform the old impulses so that there is a kind of an evolution of the old impulses uh, so it's a lot of work uh, to really uh, elementally restructure an area uh, to create a functional uh, gate and functional antenna. Um, fortunately, yeah, as I said, there are some uh, nice examples. Um, okay. Ah, who is currently working on this? Hmm. Well, there are fortunately a few people working on it. Um, unfortunately, not all of them light, <laughs> because as I said, like it's a, it's also a chance for other spirits to move to our planet. So, people from lower planets, they really want to move into the better real estate. So they are very active in creating portals. The people from the light side, from the better planets, who are in a way volunteering to help this place they're fewer and less active um, so unfortunately at the moment it looks like the planet will go down in vibration rather than up uh, but we still have a few years to work on that um, so one of the people i know who's working on it who i've met is uh, a dutch woman called saskia bosman um, she has a large group supporting her financially and energetically and she places big stones which yeah, have obviously been transformed as I said on, uh, on lay points and she does a big ritual there with the benefit of usually 20 to 40 people who donate her energy or their energy to hers so she can yeah transform all the energy in that uh, in that place uh, most of the people who are in a way supporting her or i should say the bodies who are supporting her are people who've been taken over by aliens who are wanting to colonize our world um, ah yeah um about light impulses um yes there are light impulses i've when I was in uh, in the States, in Arizona, I saw a few places which uh, bore evidence of, uh, of such work being carried out and where indeed gates were created to higher impulses. Um, and they were relatively recent, so I think just decades old uh, at most. Uh, unfortunately they're in the middle of a desert <laughs> so 
So there is somebody creating nice gates, but they are not in the most influential or accessible places. Um, feel that kind of like more or less in the Great Lakes area on the North American continent there's also some group doing similar work which is also light in nature in a slightly more populated area it's more difficult for them but they're so so managing um, hmm. who more is doing this I noticed some activity like this on the kind of like on the northwest coast of India. It's very localized, there's just one area which is quite strong and growing, so probably connected to some ashram. And well, then it goes awfully quiet. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, the light side is quite, quite asleep and inactive when it comes to disrespect. Hmm. Um, so are there more questions on how to um, how to construct such a gate? Maybe I should just do it and make a little video of it. Well, hopefully when the weather is a bit better. But it will be a rather long video. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Maybe it would be good to create a manual. Um, gosh, time really flies. <laughs> so Lizzie, any more questions about this? Oh yeah, um, that brings me to another thing, which is kind of a side topic, but also connected. Um, because the Earth is moving into um, yeah, kind of a new era, and uh, humankind is having a much more dominant influence over all of the planet. Uh, the nature spirits, which were basically the caretakers for the last 26,000 years, they don't feel like they're able to cope with all the changes, the whole new era happening and stuff like this. So um, there's also a, an impulse to create new gods to help the nature spirits themselves evolve so they can deal with whatever humanity is going to do over the next 26,000 years. Uh, so that's also a very interesting new impulse to try to contact these new gods or actually to try to create them or invite them to work with the powers which will stay behind as caretakers of this planet. And maybe also to try to get more people to work with them. Um, yeah, new gods. Um, because humans have gods, which are basically their teachers. We we'll teach them very aspect, different aspects of their powers, but we're not the only ones. Animals have gods too, plants have gods too, nature spirits have gods as well. We all have greater powers who, in a way, um, embody the perfection of, uh, yeah, of our use of a power. And currently, nature spirits have to learn a lot of new powers to be able to deal with all the human interference. Um, so new gods are needed to teach the nature spirits new talents to in a way um, create also a new DNA for the nature spirits or new types of nature spirits which are able to manage on this planet. Um, so yeah, that's also a very other interesting topic to uh, to work with uh, actually also through the Kratonis egregore uh, you can contact some of these uh, new gods um, 
Yeah, it is indeed very sad that there is so little activity. I was also quite um, confused by this myself because there's millions of people who were all in this 2012 hype, the whole media and blah, and people stashing food and gold and uh, sending their pets to non-believer caretakers because they would be taken away by angels. But if you look at the source, at the, basically the very people who created the knowledge, who created the prophecy, um, I went astrally to consult with them, like what's going on, what is happening. And well, they explained things to me. And I thought, well, you must be very busy because it's now almost 2012, just a few more weeks to go. And you must have had a lot of visitors. And I was actually visitor number five, but I was kind of like at the same time they were having visitor number six. But out of these millions of people who are all believing some stories, nobody bothers to verify or to go to the source. And I think that this in itself is a very big problem of humanity, that our brains, our ability to know, to think, is in a very very sick state <laughs> and it's much easier to believe and to analyze or to think and to test and to be critical and as a result of our bad karma <laughs> we're suffering for it because yeah if you are all behaving like stupid idiots collectively or by the millions then you get a shitty planet <laughs> So it is not by our evilness, but rather by our laziness, I think, that things are not optimal. So, about, um, yeah, intellectually lazy, I would say, because uh, it is, of course, the last center of us to develop, our, our mental center. Um, and the odd thing is that we... Um, our mental center is our weakest center, but modern man trusts it more than their spiritual centers, than their instincts, than their emotions, than their feelings, which we've had way longer and which are way better developed, also spiritually better developed. So we take our weakest point and we give all our power to our weakest part. And this is very sick. <laughs> and this is a very unfortunately common spiritual disease in especially in western man to use the most spiritually sick and weak part of them to make all the decisions and yeah ultimately of course we need to work with it we need to train it to bring it up to a level which is similar to our intuition to our spiritual knowing uh, to our emotional knowledge um, but people have the idea or the illusion that their mind or their thinking is already quite good while well, it's really shit. <laughs> okay, so about working with this new um, nature powers. Um, there are some areas which uh, have been seeded basically by new types of nature spirits to see like how well they do, how well they manage. So they're kind of like prototypes um, because old nature spirits are moving away and more and more of the, yeah, of the earth is yeah, becoming arranged uh, in the way humans want it to be rather than the way plants and animals want it to be. So, and for the plants and animals to be able to evolve um, a new type of nature spirit is necessary um, because the natural impulses the natural choices of the animals and the plants can no longer be followed so the pre-planned path of evolution for the plant or for the animal is being cut off by human interference so they need another way of learning uh, the spirits which incarnate in plants or in animals and uh, this is kind of a tricky thing because 
usually you incarnate um, so you can get physical experiences which are much more solid, much more pressing than just remaining a spirit. Uh, but now actually spirits are getting very harmed or frustrated by incarnating rather than being helped by it. So there's basically two paths to take. So things can be a have a physical form without having a spirit because it's actually harmful for the spirit to incarnate. So you get living matter which is actually spiritless. So you could say almost like uh, um, uh, growing something in a petri dish so that the earth turns into a large petri dish with lots of living things but no souls, no spirits. This is one of the tracks which is being followed. Uh, another track of evolution which is being tried out is by um, enhancing the spiritual abilities of the things which incarnate so that the animal or the plant is no longer bound by its or defined by its physical experiences but it can in a way feed of the uh, of the humans so humans have very rich and interesting lives they have lots of experiences they have emotions they have thoughts they have they try out things they have failures they have successes and that's by in a way the spirit getting closer to the vibration of humans can very much like our guides are now also living our life second hand second hand but also the animals and the plants will be able to live human lives in a second hand manner and also to give them some power similar to guides so that they can actually influence human lives so they can have at least also their own experiments so that areas of land will also a field of corn for instance will start influencing the farmers or the forest will start or the park will start to influence the people in the city so it becomes a more of a two-way traffic rather than a one-way traffic but because higher powers are always inspiring lower powers it also means that a lot of the uh, things which now exist in nature as plants and uh, as animals have to kind of like really speedily evolve spiritually a lot to be able to have that right to in a way inspire humans uh, but humans themselves have kind of all, are also at the same time losing that right because we are degenerating to a harmonic level which is below plants and animals so it's kind of like a very interesting twist or turning around which is going on um, so where it will end or how it will end up I don't know but it's interesting to follow these experiments and to talk with the spirits involved and with the gods and, uh, involved. Um, so I know there are some pockets of uh, these spirits in, uh, in England. Um, they're um, close to uh, um, yeah, Cornwall, not all the way into Cornwall, a bit further towards Salisbury, south of Wales. Um, there are some areas there where these new types of spirits are uh, experimenting. Uh, there's also some areas in Scotland where they're experimenting. Um, uh, there are some areas also in Siberia where similar experiments are going on. Um, but uh, some experiments are starting to happen um, basically in the south side of the Andes, more towards uh, Chile and um, Argentina. Um, but it's also possible to invite these spirits over uh, to come to visit you and to share their knowledge with like already pre-existing nature spirits or nature powers. Um, because it's also their purpose to see how much can be yeah, salvaged or uh, what the problems are. So they're quite inquisitive spirits, quite friendly, quite nice, and a lot more evolved than nature spirits usually are. Um, so yes, indeed, there are chances that uh, as far as spiritual leadership of the world, who will be the defining power, uh, that indeed power will slip away again from the human race, even though we will be materially the, the dominant power and that we won't be spiritually the dominant power anymore. 
because now it is kind of going hand in hand uh, because it's largely based also on complexity. We are more complex beings, we have more talents, more powers, more potential than other beings, so therefore we are being granted this position. But if we continue behaving this way, then ultimately karma will backlash and these abilities will disappear from the human race. And once these disabilities have been removed from the human race, then our rights are also revoked. And indeed nature will again become the dominant power. But for karmic rights to be revoked, uh, this is not a quick process. This usually, in my opinion, it will take about two or three thousand years. But hey, on a period of 26,000, what is two or three thousand years? It's a long time. It's a significant time. But for humanity to lose its spiritual leadership position. And I hope that if that happens, that humanity will become a better follower than they were leaders. Also, um, there are also some precedents. So there are also some planets or solar systems you can visit where it's already the case. That basically the environment is more intelligent than the inhabitants of the environment. Um, it's also in a way... <laughs> um, if you also visit some of the planets of our own solar system, uh, for instance if you go to Mars and you talk to the landscape spirits, you also find that the landscape spirits on Mars are very highly evolved beings and they're also vastly superior to us. So it's a little bit closer, but yeah, unfortunately they don't have as much life to manage. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there are some other uh, star systems. I can think of about three. Um, where indeed the, the beings are just being guided by the Gaia, the, the planetary intelligence, very directly. And they're very much in a very harmonious flow with it. Um, but these places, as I said, they're more satanic in nature um, because there are people really feel part of the whole, part of the collective. And if our planet is moving away from the satanic impulse, as it has been doing and continues into the more luciferical impulse, then it's much more everybody for himself. And yeah, but it doesn't look at the moment as if these new experiments with the nature spirits are luciferical in impulse. Maybe things will change, I don't know, but not at the moment.